Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and today we're gonna to talk about how to use modes like subtract and difference with ranges and text animators. All right, so this first mode is subtract. If we have a text animator set up with the mode to subtract, whatever we have selected will basically happen outside of the range of our selection. So in this case, I have this thing colored orange and I have the position moved up. So when the actual selection goes across, it returns to normal. Of course, a lot of times you can actually achieve the same effect by having this set to add. However, there are a few cases where you'd want subtract instead. For example, if you want this all to be transparent, like if we set this to zero and have it reveal on from the middle, you can't exactly do that with the add mode because with add, if you set it to 0% opacity, as you select it, it'll disappear. So to reveal from the middle, you have to use two different ranges. Subtract lets you achieve that with just one range selector. But the other modes are kind of cool too, so let's check out Intersect. In this case, we have an animator with two ranges in it. They're both set to Intersect. The first range starts off in the middle and goes to the edges, and the second range starts in the edges and goes to the middle. So like with Mask Intersection, the only part that's actually selected is where both ranges overlap. One's going out and one's going in, so the text in the middle goes up and then down. Should be able to set this to add and have the same thing happen. It's really that second range that determines the final selection. So let's check out another interesting one. Difference. This one selects everything that isn't selected. So in this case, we have the same range that goes out from the inside. And then we have another range selector that does the same thing, but it's delayed. So what happens is the first one starts expanding. And since the second one hasn't opened up yet, it's allowed to move up. Then as that one expands out, the second one starts to open back up and then bring it back down. So the only part that isn't in both yet is this area and this area. So once they both get fully selected, everything goes away. So then you get the bouncing, which is pretty cool. That one can be pretty handy, especially if you decide to combine that with one of the wiggly selectors or perhaps the expression selectors like in the tutorials I've shown you before. And then we have the final two. Minimum, which I can't really figure out exactly what it does. Here we have the same range that expands from the center like we've had all along. And then we have the second one set to minimum, which has the first 50% selected. So here's what minimum looks like, which seems to kind of work like an intersect in this case. And then we have maximum set up the same way and it has it selected already on the one side. And then this goes across. I guess we could set this to 100%, but then everything's gonna be selected. Same thing for minimum. Set that to 100, and it just kind of selects like normal. So I'm not really sure how to exploit those two yet. So if you have any ideas, hit me up. All right, guys, that's it. If you have any comments or questions, or perhaps solutions to the minimum maximum thing, leave them in the comments down below. And as always, if you'd like to help support what I do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you follow us on workbench.tv. I've got a couple of blog updates I want to post when I get some time. And as always, I am Joe, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Mini Max on stacks on stacks.